Hello everyone. We start our show off with a band from 1940. It's George Elric and the song All Those in Favor of Swing. Step up and do your part in singing this meeting that's ready to start. Ladies and gentlemen, as president of the Elric Swingaroo. Everybody come together, about Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to hear about your swinging view. Everybody's gonna have a fun. Do you like your music sweet? Do you like it with a ride? Miss Conway, please take a vote and decide. All those favorite swings say aye. All the eyes have been all those favorite swings say aye. Elric, still working today, and so is the boy trumpeter Johnny Hudson, who was 14 years old when that was made. When George was singing with Henry Hall's band on the radio in the 1930s, they played for the very first time, the music goes round and round. Later in the same program, he sang it again. No explanation was given. What no one knew was that the Prince of Wales liked it so much that he rang up the BBC and asked them to repeat it a thing unheard of in those days. Even the great Lord Reith could not refuse a royal command. Now, seven years ago, after I did the first series of turns, I had a letter from a man named Johnny Jewel Jones, who did an act with his late partner, Phil O'Connor, called the Bashful Boys, and he asked me to show it on the program. It was his dearest wish to see it on television. Unfortunately, I'd already recorded the shows. Sadly, Johnny has since died, but I'm going to show it now, and I'm sure it will make all his family and friends very happy. So here it is, 1940, the bashful boys in looking for work.
know, the power of television is amazing. I can never get quite used to the fact that at this very moment I'm talking to millions of you. So it's just possible that during the past three minutes more people have seen the Bashful Boys than during their entire career in the theatre. You know, sometimes when we're looking through the film archives, we come across cans of film that are a complete mystery to us. Just the name on the lid. The tins have been lying on the shelf undisturbed for over 50 years. Now what we do is we put them on one side and we call them our cobweb corner. I'm going to show you one now. All we have is the name, Betty Buck. What an unusual act, Betty Bucknell in 1933. The great tenor Richard Tauber was born in Austria in 1891. He performed all over Europe, then he settled in this country and became a British citizen. He was a fine musician, composer, and also conducted orchestras all over the world. Here he is in a scene from Blossom Time, which he made at the old Elstree Studios in 1934. Oh, 
great Richard Talbot. And the beautiful girl was, of course, Jane Baxter. Now, I've got a picture of Richard Talbot taken in the 1930s, and he's actually wearing an open-neck shirt. Now, in the 1930s, everyone dressed formally at all times. So the publicity people have put an explanation on the back. I'll read it to you. Freedom of movement may be indulged in while making records. The terrific amount of energy which Tauber puts into his singing makes an open-fronted shirt almost a necessity. Now, in complete contrast, let's have a quick burst on the banjo from Mario de Pietro. Some years ago, I made a program for BBC Two about the life of Leslie Cerrone. He was an amazingly talented man, comedian, dancer, singer, songwriter, and in later years, a fine character actor. Now, in 1935, he met Leslie Holmes, who worked for a music publishing company. They teamed up together and became the two Leslies. Here they are now, singing one of Leslie Cerrone's own compositions, Tea, Light Refreshments and Minerals. Obsession with me 
When my wife had triplets, I murmured, what three? When she said, what do you think that their names ought to be? I said, cheers like refreshment and better During his lifetime, Leslie had over a hundred songs published, including Ain't It Grand to Be Bloomin' Well Dead, When the Guards Are On Parade, I Lift Up My Finger and I Say Tweet Tweet, I Like to Ride on a Choo Choo Choo, and many others. When he was well in his 80s, Leslie took on a whole new career when he became a character actor. I'm sure lots of you will remember him in that BBC comedy series, I Didn't Know You Cared, when he played Uncle Stabley. Now, here's a little continental novelty. Greta Keller, the Austrian cabaret artist in 1934. The song is the Isle of Capri. Now in this we see a lot of shots of the island before it became Gracie Field's home and a tourist attraction. Was on the Isle of Capri that he found her beneath the shade of an old walnut tree and he can still see the flowers blooming around She was a sweet as a rose at the dawn, but somehow fate had meant it to be. And though he sailed with a tide in the morning, still his heart on the Isle of Capri. Summer time was nearly over. Italian sky above. He said, Lady, I'm a rover. Can you spare a sweet word of love? She whispered softly, it's best not to linger. And then as he kissed her hand, he could see. She wore a plain golden ring on her finger. Was goodbye on the Isle of Capri. Greta Keller, accompanied by the composer Dr. Wilhelm Gross. One of my favorite radio programs is The Organist Entertains. It brings back so many memories to me. I can remember when I was a boy sitting in the cinema. When the film ended, the curtains used to close and they'd change from green to red. And then a spotlight would pick up the organist as he came out of the pit. Everyone would burst into a sing-song and the organist would look back over his shoulder, smiling at the audience. I always wondered how he managed to play without looking at the notes. Anyhow, that's why I've chosen our next turn, which is Sandy McPherson at the BBC Theatre Organ. Now, I'm sure as soon as you hear this voice, it will bring back memories of the days when he was the resident BBC theatre organist. Who will ever forget such programmes as Sandy's Half Hour, Chapel in the Valley, and From My Post Bag, which was the very first request programme. A little tune that you've probably heard before, Any Broken Hearts to Mend.
Bud Flanagan was King Rat three times, 1945, 46 and 51. Just look at this oil painting of him. It shows him standing in the wings of the London Palladium. In the background, you can see the show going on. It was actually painted by the stage doorkeeper of the London Coliseum, a man called King Cave. Let's see Bud now in a little bit from a film he made during the war. It was called Here Comes the Sun. In it, he's taking part in a prison concert and he's introduced by his lifelong partner and friend, Chesney Allen. Ladies and gentlemen, we give you Lingerawa, a program presented by the courtesy of the Sheffield Steel Company, the makers of comfy handcuffs, given by the lags and lasses of Canterville Prison and coming to you from satisfied criminals with an austere cast. Now, tonight is the night of all. We want you to enjoy yourselves. We want you to feel at home. After all, this is nicer than being at home. As you listen, I'll listen to the delightful strains of their signature tune, Linger a While, sung and played to you by time-serving men under the battle of Corona Flanagan. We give you, ladies and gentlemen, 30 minutes of sing. Sing. Linger a while, let a kind thought come your way. Linger a while. Doing time shows your crime doesn't pay. We are all together in our solitude. Birds of the feather, some are doing labor, some are doing service. You don't wear a crown, light your face with a great big smile. So she. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to present to you a few magical moments. Here we have a cabin. They're all very clever, aren't they, dear? Yes, they are. That's why they're here. It's empty. I now place Corona inside the cabin. I count three. He will disappear and come up from the audience firing a revolver. One, two, three. Let me give us a chance on as quick as that. One, and pause for the quarter of an hour, two, and then please yourself. One, and two. Not yet, not yet. Start again. One, and two, and three. Something's gone wrong with the trap door. Leave it to me. I'll fix it. The tailor was called up before it was finished. You see that? I'll fix it. One, and two, and three. Again. Just a snippet of Bud and Chez in 1941. You know, I shall always be very proud of the fact that I was the last person to work with dear old Bud. Just before he died, he recorded the signature tune to Dad's Army, which to me, as a very new television writer, was a wonderful thrill. So let's finish our show with some tap dancers, or as they are called in show business, wallopers from the mid-1930s, the Danny Lipton Trio. Danny Lipton Trio. 
Before I go, let me tell you about some of the turns I've got for you in our next show. Nat Ganella and his Georgians, Tommy Hanley, Ronald Franco, Melville Gideon, Rob Wilton, and many more. Until then, thanks for watching.